Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Mar my name is Mark Rasmussen. I'm president of Buzzards Bay Coalition. And on behalf of all of our project partners, I have the wonderful pleasure to welcome you all today to celebrate a truly exciting partnership between conservation and affordable housing. I also want to welcome you to West Wareham and to the banks of the Weeweantic River the largest tributary to Buzzards Bay, which I hope you all take the chance to go back and see after the program today. Preserving natural lands along the rivers and throughout the Buzzards Bay watershed is an important part of our work at the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Land conservation prevents pollution from getting to the bay, it benefits water quality, fish and wildlife habitats, and the character of our communities. It also makes special places like this one open for people to explore, to enjoy the outdoors, and to invest in their community. So we here, we have, select, we have successfully protected here nine acres of land along the Weeweantic River, including 1,300 feet of frontage. The existing trails make the land immediately accessible and combined with other recently protected properties, including the 45 acre Westgate Conservation Area just downstream of here, the project contributes to a growing greenway corridor along the Weeweantic River, which is open to the public and helps protect river water quality. So our organization has successfully completed many such projects, preserving 8,000 acres of like this special place in this area. But the project that we, sell to, we celebrate today is entirely unique. Here with our very capable partners, we've been able to save land and water that is important to our mission, while simultaneously, for the first time ever, helping to expand housing opportunities for those in need in our community. This is the first time in our region, and actually we've been discussing, we think the first time in Massachusetts, that land and water conservation have been advanced simultaneously with affordable housing through the Community Preservation Program. We are very proud of this achievement. I hope this is the first of many such days like this. So I, this is the day of thank you. So I, I, I'm going to add mine here before I pass the program on to John. Um, so I want to start with my short list of thank yous. And I've lost her in the crowd now. I want to start uh, the thank you today by saying thank you to the former property owner who made this deal possible, <laughs> Betty Jesus and her advisor, accountant Roger Parent, are right here. <laughs> this property has been cared for by Betty and her father, Henry Anderson, when he acquired it 70 years ago. She reached out to us, understood our vision for the property, and stuck with us despite three years of putting the deal together. Uh, so thank you, Betty, very much. I want to thank the Wareham Land Trust, many members who are uh, here in the back, back here today, Wareham Land Trust members, particularly John Browning, who helped our staff on this project from the start and was instrumental in making connections with the town and with community preservation funds, as well as affordable housing partnerships. I want to recognize the leadership of the town of Wareham, the wonderful leadership of the town of Wareham, including the Board of Selectmen, the Community Preservation Committee, the Conservation Commission, the town administrator, and town meeting voters themselves who voted to support this unprecedented project. This town, Wareham, should be particularly lauded for its embrace of the Community Preservation Act. There has been strong support for CPA in this town since it was adopted, where it was adopted early in the state and at one of the highest levels of contributions. The program has funded a diverse group of projects over time and will help preserve the special character of Wareham far into the future. This project is yet another example of Wareham being a leader in community preservation and how it utilizes CPA funds. At the Buzzards Bay Coalition, I have to call out Brendan Annette from our staff who brought this project partnership together from Betty to Jesus's kitchen table to the celebration today. Uh, <laughs> Brendan, we are very fortunate for your talent and your passion in making this deal come together. So thank you very much. <laughs> and finally, to the folks at Father Bill's in Mainspring, they proved to be the ideal partners, not just to enable to this, this project, but to dramatically multiply its benefits be beyond anything we could have imagined. From the start, the presence of this apartment building was going to be a difficult challenge if we looked at this just as a land conservation deal. We considered all sorts of options, from tearing down the building to selling it off for private development. The connections that were forged with housing and homeless advocates in Wareham resulted in our introduction to John at Father Bill's. Their professionalism and practical approach to this project matched well with what we were trying to accomplish here and transformed an opportunity into a reality. So today we celebrate important accomplishments, permanent protection of this stretch of riverfront, wonderful availability of affordable housing here in Wareham, but more importantly we celebrate the teamwork and the partnership of a group of people and organizations who came together to find new, creative, effective ways to, to help the needs of our community. 
So with that, I'd like to invite John Yuzwinski, the president of Father Bills in Mainspring, to say a few words and to guide us through the program today. John. Thanks, Mark. So Father Bills in Mainspring, days where we can create and open up permanent supportive housing for our most vulnerable and poorest neighbors is a great day. Father Bills in Mainspring always believes in ending homelessness one life at a time. And this community today and over the last year came together as partners and decided to do a very unique partnership where we were able to preserve land, add opportunities for recreation, and also create housing for people without a home. Sad to say there is a homeless issue in the Wareham community. We had about 61 people use the winter shelter program run by the Wareham Interfaith Group, use the shelter this winter. We have seen that number continuously go up the past several years. There has been a tremendous group of people that have created a 10-year plan to end homelessness in the town of Wareham. And we are happy to say, and as a partner of that plan, that we are working the plan, and over the last three years, we've created 13 units of housing in the town of Wareham, but this is our first project congregate-based program that, that we, we have here. This is the solution, what you see right here. Not having people use shelters, not having people roam the community day to day without a home, but to have their own key and have their own place to rest their head. We're blessed today where we'll be opening this house up officially where we've already moved uh, one person in. His name is TC. He has been 30 years in the Wareham community. He was born at Toby Hospital. His house burned down in 1987. and He's been homeless living in a tent since then. And he's living now here. We have Eddie G who's actually here today in the crowd, 15 years in West Wareham, living in, on Route 28, works as a maintenance worker, has run the river here in his canoe several times across his life, found himself being homeless, and has his eye on this front apartment unit right here. <laughs> this partnership is, is tremendous and, and we're very, very blessed with the Wareham Land Trust, the BBC, um, very blessed by the, the town of Wareham and their support through the community preservation funds. Um, so with that, you know, the, the town had been supportive through the, all the processes that, that we went through. Uh, we're very excited about not just this project, but ending homelessness in the town of Wareham in the future. Uh, so we wouldn't have been able to do that without the selectmen and all the boards that were participated here. Uh, with that, I want to invite Peter Teitelbaum up to come up and represent the town of Wareham. It's a real privilege to stand up here and uh, be in a position to speak on behalf of the town uh, at a gathering like this. Of so many people, uh, all of the people from Father Bill's, I have a lot of familiarity with Father Bill's. My girlfriend lives in Quincy. I've seen their work up there for 30 years. I've seen what they've done for homeless people. I've seen that they don't just operate a shelter, but that they work hard to transition people from shelters to homes so that they can get back on their feet and begin to uh, sort of reclaim their lives, if you will. It's, it's an amazing organization. Uh, I think they're probably the preeminent organization in the state, if not New England, doing this. I first met with officials from Father Bills, and I believe you were one of them back in 2013 and 2014 when I was chairman the last time. And at that point, they were just exploring getting involved in the town of Wareham. They wanted to know what the climate was here, whether housing for the homeless would be accepted here, whether there would be an outcry about it, whether the citizens uh, were prepared for that sort of thing. and. One of the things I said was, does that really matter? The problem is so huge here, we have to take care of the people who don't have the resources, don't have the ability, and, and don't just have the, the life skills, perhaps, to get back on their feet. And so, with that, uh, 
it's very heartening to stand here today and see that, you know, something that was just remotely discussed a few years ago has come to fruition. And really, uh, you know, we've had a bunch of people thanked already. I'd like to reiterate the thanks for the taxpayers of the town of Wareham who uh, contribute to the funding for this through the Community Preservation Act. I'd like to especially thank those taxpayers who came to town meeting and voted in support of this. I believe the vote was unanimous, or pretty damn close to it. Alan can correct me if I'm wrong. Unanimous. Unanimous. Uh, to spend community preservation money in this town, we've had a couple of controversial expenditures, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, to get a unanimous vote on a community preservation article is, is frankly a stunning achievement, but it speaks to the reputation of the parties involved, uh, the Buzzes Base Coalition's uh, reputation for preserving land, uh, especially along riverfronts, and also uh, file the bills and mainstreams for their work in, in uh, working with and <coughs> aggressively, I don't want to say attacking, but go, going after the problem of homelessness, transitioning people from out of the woods, out of the tents, and into places like this, and then back into mainstream society. I'd also like to thank the clergy of the town of Wareham, who have been providing the temporary support and turning point and organizations like that. They've sort of taken up the slack where the town hasn't been able to operate. And you know, I'm mindful that it's, it's tough to sit here and say that we haven't lived up to our obligation as a municipality to deal with this issue as much as we'd like. I'm hoping that the funds that are provided today make up for that somewhat. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. I just want to quickly um, also uh, thank uh, Brendan um, from BBC and Nicole Fitzgerald uh, from our team. Nicole actually uh, was uh, almost living down here, I think, over, over the last year, going to all the meetings and, and talking to the community and making the project work. I think she must have loved this area so much, she recently moved her family to Maine. So, uh, we'll have to uh, think about that in the future, about who we're sending down there. But um, thank you so much. It wouldn't have happened uh, without you, Brendan. Um, you know, when uh, I had the uh, pleasure to work uh, side by side with Father Bill McCarthy, yes, there was a, a, a Father Bill with Father Bill's, and um, we used to have uh, interfaith breakfasts up in Quincy um, as uh, we started as an interfaith coalition to address homelessness. And um, Congressman Keating at the time, as the DA, used to uh, co-chair that with uh, Father Bill. And, um, and probably at those uh, events, uh, Father was hitting him up for probably a lot of things. <laughs> but uh, I've, I could never um, try to uh, emulate Father Bill in those ways. You know, but I, w but I was down in uh, Washington last year and, and met with the congressman. And we talked about was Wareham and the homeless and Plymouth and this region and, and how it was growing, sad to say. Um, and we talked about the HUD money, the HUD McKinney money that goes right to targeting to our homeless, and we know that the president's budget has that getting cut drastically. Well, HUD McKinney money that the congressman has been supporting is going into a few of these units here. Uh, federal money is going into a few of these units, and I'll speak more about the other, but um, I think for uh, community preservation land and uh, affordable housing, we have a great champion, and we're great that the congressman Bill Keating could come here today and say a few words. Thank you. John uh, did mention to this, you know, the possibility of this. It wasn't even a reality and, and the dream of this uh, quite some time ago, even before we were in uh, D.C. together. Uh, and with all of those things, uh, I think he's learned that you just never know. Uh, you go down a path and you hope things work the right way. And this is a terrific success story here. Uh, and it wouldn't be here without the work and support of everyone that's been here, state level, representative at the town level, community level, board of selectmen, and uh, all the different groups, including uh, town meeting as a whole. You know, I, I think uh, I either have been following Father Bill's mainspring around in my life, or they've been following me. I think it's a little of both. Uh, mainspring House, when I was in the state senate, uh, was very active in the eastern area, and I worked with them. Then there was a merger. Uh, I went as a district attorney and then as a congressman in the Quincy Weymouth area and saw the work that they were done. And now here, seeing a terrific example of 
people coming together, a community coming together. The homelessness issue is a, a very serious one. In Massachusetts, there are probably about 19,608, by last count, uh, homeless citizens in Massachusetts. Uh, a staggering number that approximates maybe one in 25 when you drill down to see what it does. And, and my district, that number is about six, over 1,600 people. Yet, with the studies that have been done across the country, uh, this is one of the most solvable issues that we have in our country, and that's the good news. But the approach that all the experts uh, have said is the solution to this is to put together coalitions, because you really need coalitions because of the many issues that, uh, is ne that are necessary to deal with homelessness. Those coalitions break down the barriers and they work together. And I can't think of a better coalition that's been formed right here in the Wareham area. Think about it. Uh, you had the land trust and uh, all those preservation monies in place for some time, but they identified this and embraced it. You had town officials showing their leadership all the way to town meeting, embracing it. You had conservation groups dealing in relation and dealing with this. For instance, besides the land trust, the Wareham Conservation Commission, uh, great supporters. The Wareham Clergy Association, terrific supporters. You had Budgets Bay Coalition in the region supporting this type of effort. Uh, and together, uh, we've all dealt with uh, an issue and really come up with solutions. And they're solutions that are textbook uh, in this regard. This is a win-win situation. Uh, we're preserving all this open space, uh, and I always have trouble with this. Even. I've had to go to school to Wewantic. Uh, in our area. It's always, it's always good too, but we went in, whatever, I still have trouble, I confess. There's too many we's in it. But there's not too many we's in what we're celebrating here. Uh, this is uh, a culmination of the we's, coming together as a community. That wasn't in a, any remarks either. <laughs> but it, it has been a win-win situation. It's a win for uh, preserving open space, and it's a win for creating space, space for our community's most vulnerable. Uh, it's a day of celebration for what's been done, but in a, in a more fundamental uh, level, it's, a, it's really a celebration of why we have a community in the first place. So congratulations. Thank you. Congressman. Um, we've had a champion uh, at the local level here uh, in a sense of uh, advocacy to ending homelessness and uh, I've been going up to her office uh, here in downtown Wareham and at the State House the last several years um, as uh, Rep Gifford was on the lead leadership council for uh, ending homelessness in, in Wareham. And uh, she's been very supportive of uh, moving forward in solution-oriented approaches uh, to address our issue and of course was very supportive with this whole partnership to preserve all of this land. Uh, so we are very blessed uh, to have a state representative that is really helping us end homelessness uh, at the uh, local level. There is mass rental vouchers also in here to help us with the operating. So again, it's, there's federal resources, there's state resources, there's local resources. Um, it's a tremendous partnership across the board, and we really, really thank uh, Susan Gifford's uh, support along all the way and her guidance. So with that, I'd love to introduce uh, Susan Gifford, our state president. say other than how proud I am to be here today how proud I am to see what I hope is the first step toward addressing a very serious problem uh, it's a problem that is statewide and it knows no boundaries by community 
that no no demographic. Uh, it's people without a place to call home need our help. And I first got my education, I'd say, uh, thanks to John and uh, the folks at Father Bill's uh, Mainspring and Reverend Dave uh, as, as part of the Wareham Coalition on Homelessness. Uh, talk about learning uh, what, what, the, what the real issues are. Uh, the people who have no voice and that how we need to be their voice. And, you know, what Congressman Keating said, you know, it's a, it's a win-win. Well, I think it's a win-win-win because we're not only tackling a very serious problem, but we're also preserving open space and making that open space accessible to the people of the community. And for this project to finally be a reality, I am so hopeful that we continue to move forward and, and address the issue that, let, let's face it, it's not going to go away. And if we can help, as John said, just one person at a time, that's huge. And we need to keep the focus. And again, I personally also want to thank not only the folks at, at Father Bill's in Mainspring, but also the Wareham Land Trust and the folks at the Buzzards Bay Coalition. And Mark, I've been seeing an awful lot of you in the last couple of weeks, which is not a bad thing, but always happy to have you in town. But um, when, you know, when I was first approached about this, this particular idea, uh, John came to see me and uh, it's just kind of, you know, bouncing things off uh, when, when the idea was in its infancy stage. And I just thought, this is, this is perfect. This is, this is perfect on so many levels. It is a step in the right direction, although it's a small step. And a, while a lot of people have worked very hard to make this come to fruition, we still have a lot of work to do. And I can tell you, I will be there every way that I can to help continue addressing the issue of homelessness and also open space preservation so I thank you very much for having me here. And again, I just want to say how proud I am to be here today. Thank you. Uh, Senator uh, Mark Pacheco has uh, been a supporter of ours for several years. He, he recently, a couple, couple years ago, came over and, and helped us get funding to open up a, a, a play center at our family shelter in, in Middleborough. And uh, he's been a, a real champion of our workforce programs uh, here at Father Bill's in Mainspring, and, and we know he's been a, a supporter of, of, of land preservation. Um, Senator Pacheco wasn't able to join us uh, this morning, but um, I'd love to uh, welcome up his Chief of Staff, Mary Wozlik, to say a few words. Good morning. Unfortunately, Senator Pacheco had a previously scheduled oversight hearing in Pittsfield, so he couldn't be here this morning. But he asked that I come and extend his congratulations to everyone here, the Board of Selectmen, town meeting, Father Bill's Main Spring. I think Mass Housing also had a little bit to do with this. Who uh, Mass Housing has been a great partner in housing projects all across southeastern Massachusetts. This takes leadership, vision, and creativity, and that's exactly what we need to help in homelessness. Many of you may know Senator Pacheco was a lead co-sponsor on the Preservation Act, so he was thrilled to learn that that was being used not only to help homelessness, but also to pre preserve the quality of life for the community. So once again, thank you to everyone, and we hope that this is an example of the first of many types of these projects to come. And uh, well, as Mary just uh, referenced, uh, Mass Housing has uh, become a tremendous partner for our movement to end homelessness here on the South Shore and Southern Mass. 
and uh, they've helped uh, support our last four or five uh, housing projects and so they, they really believe and understand our model of creating housing um, for the zero to fifty percent median income people especially people that are homeless uh, and we've got our, our great friend today from from mass housing uh, ed chase uh, here to say a few words mass housing co contributed seventy five thousand dollars towards this project so with that i'd love to introduce uh, ed chase a good friend Good morning to you all. Uh, on behalf of the board and staff of Mass Housing, I want to thank all of you who have worked so hard to get to this point today. Uh, through the Center for Community Recovery Innovations, uh, which we call CCRI, Mass Housing remains committed to affordable housing, especially for those most in need, people with disabilities, low-income folks, veterans, and those in recovery. It's our privilege to continue our long partnership with John Yaswinski and Father Bills of Main Spring and, uh, and also all the other local uh, partners and, and supporters of this project. This is a special project today that becomes whole to six individuals. And although uh, certainly uh, money is what makes buildings possible, it's the human compassion and the commitment of individuals in the local community, responsive government, that really results in real homes for real people. In addition to that, it's a beautiful setting here too. So congratulations to you all. Thank you. So um, there is a, a great local organization's, uh, the Wareham Area Committee for the Homeless and Turning Point, that has been here for a long time fighting the fight to combat homelessness. And they've been a tremendous partner across the board with everybody here and the greater community. Uh, when Father Bills in Main Springs has been partnering with Turning Point and the Wareham Area Committee, uh, we've been blessed by meeting so many of their board members and their volunteers and seeing the local commitment um, because we haven't been able to bring more state and public resources to, to make sure that everybody has a home. We are working better together to reach that goal. Uh, so when Father Bills in Mainspring did this project, we said to uh, Reverend David Shaw, the chair, and to the Turning Point Board, um, would you be, we'd love to give you the opportunity to name the building here. Uh, and with that, we'd like to introduce Pastor Shaw, one of the true champions of this community to end homelessness to come up for a special presentation. <laughs> for the past three years, this property and this house have been uh, an item on a real estate log or a warrant item at town meeting, but it's my privilege this morning to give it a much more human face. We would like to name this house the Larry and Joan Walton House. Fifteen years ago, in the hearts of Larry and Joan Walton, a dream came to life. The dream was that homelessness and near homeless people could have a chance to live in the safety and security of their own home. The organization that the Waltons founded, Turning Point, and the Wareham Area Committee for the Homeless, has for the past 15 years striven to keep people in our community from losing their housing. More recently, in partnership with Father Bills and Mainspring, and with the generous support of many donors, we have been able to find permanent supportive housing <laughs> for more and more chronically homeless men and women. The purchase of this apartment house is further evidence of the power of dreams to come true. I'm also involved with the Wareham Area Clergy Association's Knights of Hospitality Temporary Overnight Homeless Shelter. In the past nine winters, our churches have sheltered over 200 homeless people. Several of the tenants who will be moving into the Larry and Joan Walton House have been guests at the Knights of Hospitality. It's especially gratifying for me to see our friends move from an air mattress in a church basement to their own safe and secure apartment. I want to thank all the people that have been thanked again, but they deserve the, the, the additional recognition for the town of Wareham, the Buzzards Bay Coalition, Father Bills and Mainspring, the Wareham Land Trust, Mass Housing, on and on it goes. I thank you for making this dream come true. 
I wish that Larry and Joan were able to be here today. Larry passed away a few years ago, so he's present in spirit in this drawing done by his granddaughter Mercedes. She's being held in his arms as a, as a baby. Unfortunately, Joan, who is still alive and living in Florida, uh, wanted dearly to be here. Her daughter flew her up here, and then she had a stroke the night before last. Fortunately, it's a mild stroke. She's recovering at St. Luke's Hospital. But uh, she was just absolutely tickled pink uh, that what they started so long ago is being recognized here. So be praying for her. Her daughter, uh, Larry and Joan's daughter, Patricia McGarry, is here, though. And she would like to bring some greetings. Walton McGarry, I want to say thank you to everybody. I work for uh, Governor Baker's Executive Branch of the Commonwealth, and I work for the taxpayers. I translate in Spanish, so um, I have an immigrant side as well as I guess I get that from John and Larry, but the homelessness side, which is true to my heart with Wareham, living here and having uh, worked on the Wareham Fire Department as an EMT and transporting the homeless people to uh, Toby Hospital. and and working at Nights of Hospitality as well at Church of the Good Shepherd. So it all comes around. And my mother can't be here, but she did want me to say these are her words. And I wanted to say to everybody here who has been involved in making this happen for uh, to end homelessness, February 20th, 2003, Reverend Larry Walton and his wife Joan incorporated with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Wareham Area Committee for the Homeless. Funding and collaboration of many organizations, Maine Spring Father Bills, and numerous volunteers from the committee in the community from Buzzards Bay all the way through Middleborough and Wareham have come together to end homelessness in our community of Wareham. Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, assist as it is me that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth and uh, verse 11 wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power and I thank you God bless you all your spirits with mine as we bless this house. Peace be to this house and all who dwell in it. May they find within these walls safety and security from their trials and fears. May it become for them a place of healing and prosperity. May it be for them a launching pad for a new stage of life filled with supportive friends, peace of mind, and productive endeavors. May those who live here be a light in this neighborhood, a source of encouragement to others who sojourn here, and a helping hand to those who, like them, find themselves in need. Almighty and kind Heavenly Father, fill those who inhabit this home with the same spirit of wisdom, courage, and compassion as you did those for whom this house is named. Amen. Amen. To know that our hearts and prayers are with your mother right now for a speedy recovery. Well, we now want to just end our program by again thanking all of our guests for coming here today. I'd like to invite the speakers uh, and all of our partners in front of the home for a ribbon cutting and, and, and a photo right after. Uh, there are uh, refreshments and food located on the back deck and of course the two units here are open for people to see. I know that the um, BBC staff uh, and Wareham Land Trust staff are here for tours of, of the property and, and the trails. Um, and again, thank you for helping us preserve land and preserve housing. Uh, we are so blessed to have such a caring community. With that, God bless and have a great day.